Hello everyone, welcome to another Kerbal Space Program video. Today we are going to be taking a pretty nice looking rover out to Zimun. So just uh, starting here, pretty basic rocket. This is a pretty heavy uh, payload. It's about over 100 tons we need to get out to, uh, to Mun surface. We have nine Mastodon engines in the bottom there powering us. Pretty good ish thrust to weight about 1.29 i think um which isn't actually great but you know pretty heavy payload so you know you're never really going to be zooming off the launch pad but i think it's okay uh just starting our gravity turn now starting to pitch over a fairly basic ascent um just because you have a slightly lower twr than most craft you're going to want to be a little bit steeper on the ascent uh, maybe it'll be 45 degrees by maybe 15 kilometers uh, the stage will burn for just about a minute, 45 seconds, and then uh, once the uh, nine mastodons get ejected or staged away, it's going to have, I believe it's uh, seven skippers as our second stage. There they go. And that'll get us uh, pretty much most of the way into orbit. As you can see, these uh, the skipper's a pretty good engine. Uh, I think it's a little bit underused. Um, I try to use you know engines that aren't commonly used because, I mean, yeah, rhinos are great. Um, but you know, skippers are great too. Um, you can see it just staged away the fairing there, and we can uh, see the rover for the first time. You see, it's a pretty, pretty chunky one. Uh, it's pretty cool, especially uh, the internal view. Is, I really like it. Uh, I spent quite a bit of time on that rover, so uh, hopefully you guys like it. I know it's not quite as good as like maybe Matt Lowndes rovers, but you know, I'm not like an expert at building stuff. Um, there, you can just see the views out the front, and we can uh, get ready to do our in our, our orbital insertion burn that's what it's called um and uh, yeah basically pretty standard uh, our skipper stage will get us most of the way there then uh, we're going to use our um you know our mun transport stage the way this is supposed to work this stage is supposed to get us into orbit then the next one is supposed to get us on a tli or translunar ejection and then the last stage is supposed to circularize and land i i, I had too much delta v so we kind of I had it have a waste a bit, but you know, it, it's better. Um, you know, it's just nice not having to worry about it. And just have a nice chill mission today. As you can see, uh, that uh, is a bit of an inclined orbit to the Mun. Uh, we will fix that with a correction burn down the line. Uh, but right now, we're just going to do one orbit around the planet so we can get to our maneuver node and we can start our burn with the seven Wolfhound engines, which give us a pretty good TWR for a. Uh, for a vacuum stage, you get zoom in with those guys. Uh, this whole thing is a five meter craft, basically. So there's, you know, there's quite quite a bit of fuel in this, at least per height. Because 3.75 meters, especially 2.5 meter rockets, those can get pretty tall pretty quick. But uh, that's not one of these. You can see the map screen is kind of freaking out there, but um, that does resolve itself. There it goes. And just did our correction burn, or planned our correction burn, and then we can just go ahead and do that like so so as we do the correction burn uh, it's pretty small just 20 meters a second uh, if you don't know um, if you have those plane changes you don't want to be changing those uh, when you're already in an orbit around the Mun because uh, that will be way more expensive much easier to do on an interplanetary or inter not interplanetary but you know between on your way out to uh, the Mun because the Mun's gravity will make it much harder you want to basically do these plane changes when you have the most little amount of gravity affecting you. Oh, not now, please. And we can see a nice uh, eclipse. The moon was eclipsed there by Kerbin, and you can see it kind of reveal itself. Now we're just coming over the moon, and we're going to be getting ready to do our circularization burn into Zimun. Coming in on the dark side, we're going to want to be coming in with the rotation of the moon. That just can save us a little bit of delta V on our burn. Not that we really need to, but it's just kind of what you do. Here we go, we are firing the engine. You can see that uh, target craft, or there's a craft over there you can kind of see for a second in the background. That was my uh, MUN station. That was in uh, my Soyuz video featured there, and it'll probably be featured in some future videos, but you know, they don't exist yet. I mean, I'm just disabling that uh, Kerbal Engineer readout there, the little red target thing. And here we are coming in for a landing with a nice view of Kerbin in the background there. So we're just going to be trying to find a good spot to land. And we can go ahead and stage away that uh, seven wolfhounds. Now we have three wolfhounds for our bottom stage, which we're going to be used to for our landing. So we're just uh, going to be burning now. 
Uh, I did start the bird a little bit too late because I am obviously a genius. So we're kind of do a little bit of fancy dancy, tippy tippy, let's not crashy crashy <laughs> maneuvers. And uh, I kind of wanted to get over that crater. So I guess it all did kind of work out at the end, even though we almost, like, really almost crashed. But that's not important. The Kerbals are still enjoying themselves. So we're just over that crater now. I thought I might try and be brave, but uh, I, there's no way I was going to crest, like, that small little crater there. So uh, we're just going to pitch up again. Up, 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 up. This is why we package extra Delta V, isn't it? I don't know why the Delta V is broken on my uh, bottom left there, the Kerbal, but... Uh, Kerbal Engineer has accurate Delta V. I'm not using any cheats, so don't. Um, yeah, don't go crazy. <laughs> so we're just uh, finishing up the burn. Crazy in the comment section. Because I know if I, someone would say something, maybe, if this video does well. You know, just for random guy who thinks I'm using cheats. I'm not. So we're just doing our landing burn. I've just enabled uh, RCS because I have some Werner engines on the top, which should help us give us a nice soft landing. Um, because there, we don't really have any sort of intricate like sky crane, you know, landing. We're just gonna land it like this because the surface gravity of the Mun is so low. I'm just orienting the uh, rover, so we're kind of when we uh, hit down, uh, it's gonna be a hill, so that's gonna naturally just push our push us over. So I want to be able to get our wheels down. Obviously, we don't want to be landing back first because that will be a very uh, very bad mission. So now we're coming in nice and slowly. Unfortunately, I, I, I did come in really slow, but the engine still kind of fell off. Nothing you can really do about that. I might have just forgot to auto shred it, but that's not important. We can just drive away and it'll be out of sight. Okay, so, and you can see those Werner engines firing. I fired them a little bit too much, so I think I might have accidentally knocked us backwards. Yeah. But, I mean, either way, uh, we are going to be tipping over yet. Looks like we're going to be tipping down the hill. We're just going to want to get ourselves oriented properly and get those Werner engines on and just nice and steady, nice and steady, nice, easy lowering of the front side of the craft or the rover. And there we go. We have a touch down. We can go ahead and get rid of that docking port and we can just leave that stuff there. And now we have our rover and we can just uh, do some fun stuff around Zaman. Um, one thing, if you guys notice, there's like a tiny little wheel on the front of the craft. Uh, you probably saw it, maybe. It's kind of obvious because it kind of sticks out. Um, it's, you know, there's a tiny little white non-retractable landing gear at the front, like the front middle. You can kind of see it in there. Um, all that is for is because those big engines, those rover engines, they can only turn if you use differential thrust or differential power or whatever. Um, but differential power... You know, your turning circle is really wide, and the way it works is it throttles the one end, the one side up all the way, and the other is to zero, so you can get going really, really fast. Like this thing I've seen go over 50 meters a second. So I just have that front little wheel in the front to just help us steer, uh, do these ni nice sharp turns like you can see us doing right now. It was very actually useful, pretty good idea. It does look a little weird, but, you know, what can you do? Uh, I should probably talk about the purpose of this rover. I haven't really touched on that very much. This is a fuel refinery slash gatherer slash drill or slash you know fueling system this rover is actually part of a slightly bigger project that i'm doing um that we will have to be stay stay tuned for that that will be coming out hopefully less than a week from now but i'm not going to make any promises because we, as we all know commitments are hard and you know work is hard and i'm not you know, who likes to work? I mean, this is a game, to be honest, but, you know. Building intricate stuff and getting intricate rockets, you know, it can get pretty lame at times. So we're just going to reboard. There is no ladder. You kind of just have to EVA pack on. That's just, eh, what can you do? Uh, so basically, the way this thing works is it has that docking port in the back, and you can, I'm just showing out some of uh, the internal views so we can just kind of see. That looks, that looks pretty neat. I love the, the Mark II lander can, especially with, like, the in the rover mode. It is just so cool it's one of my favorite command pods or yeah i guess it is technically a command pod or control rooms whatever you'd call it so basically like i was saying the way this thing works is it has that main fuel tank in the bottom like we're at the with the cupola module behind that it's just a giant fuel tank hanging out the bottom and that's just how we fill up 
And then the middle section with all those structural panels, that all has batteries and fuel cells and all that kind of stuff to power the rover. And then we just have drills, as you can see, that we are just extending now. And we are extending the radiators right now. All t A lot of them. I probably should have put an action group, but I forgot because I, you know, I'm also lazy. So we're going to do it this way, which eventually takes longer, so I don't know what I'm talking about. So then we have a also a convertitron in the back there which will refine our uh, ore that we've gathered from the ore tanks that are sitting on the sides there and that will turn it into fuel that we can use to fuel up craft and uh, we could either use that fuel to just fuel up a craft and it could go somewhere or it could go up to the station fill up the station all in all it's a pretty good pretty good i'm pretty happy with this rover it took, like i said it took a fair bit of time to build there we go just starting up the isru and you can see we have the uh, communitron up top to raise uh, just to communicate. Uh, turning on the fuel cells now, not turning on all of them. We don't really need all of them. I just kind of spammed them in there. It was really cramped. It was really hard to see what I was doing. Hashtag excuses. And then we do have some Mark II crew cabin. Well, that's kind of cringy, but there is some Mark II crew cabins in the back, um, in the middle there, just because I thought, hey, you know, these Kerbals will be here a long time. They kind of need a place to you know, just be. And look at that view. That is just awesome looking, guys, isn't it? I think that is going to be the thumbnail of the video. Yeah. I know what else I think. We've made it to the end of the video. So I'd like to thank you very much for watching this next time. Please rate or comment to this video. Once again, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. And bye.